Check one. Welcome back to Nerds of the Gym. I'm Marco. I'm Brandon. And today is December 7th, 2023. You want to know what happened last week? I forgot to say the date. Ooh. I think that's the first time ever I messed up. I messed up. I could have gone in and edited something in, but I didn't. I, I, I admit to my mistakes. I own up to them and I deal with them. Everybody can roast me. All three people that watch the entire episode. Aside from that, nobody watches the entire episodes. They watch the clips. <laughs> <laughs> Tis the season. Tease the season. I, I actually that is something I just uh found out. Um what happened to your image? Did it go out? Yeah, your image went out entirely. Um Give me one second, I'll reboot. This is a podcast, so I can just uh oh you're rebooting the app? No, no, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um this is a podcast, so this is sound, so I can talk about this. So um a couple weeks ago, uh me and my girlfriend go out, get a Christmas tree for her parents' house. We put it up, decorate it. And I had some holiday drink and I was like, tea's the season. And she's like, that's not tea. And I was like, what? No, like tea's the season. Like, you know, like the songs (laughs) and everything. And she's like, it's not tease, it's tiz. And I was like, oh, I've been saying it wrong for 23 and a half years. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So I just looked like a complete idiot but yeah i think that's the most marco story we're going to get today tease this season huh you on it you didn't even see it in writing or anything no i've seen it in writing t-i-s i thought it was always tease the season i thought it was like that's how you pronounce it you know to yeah that public school system really did a number on us well you tease think the that, season you think that's bad i'm not sure i get I, you know what now that i say it in your voice tease the season yeah, okay, I can see where you made the mistake now. Yeah. With your enunciation, I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's good that you learned. Yeah, yeah. You other people. But, like, my pronunciation of things have always been off. Um, You know, like, back in 10th grade, I had to read this passage in AP U.S. History. So this is advanced placement class. And mm-hmm. I was going through... And the word that popped up was police. But I thought policy in my head and said polis. Nobody batted an eye or said a word. <laughs> it didn't take me until I kept reading over because I was like, what What does polis mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I read this word and no idea what I just said, what it meant. Eventually, I realized I was like, oh, wait, that's police. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, little, little throwback. I'm right there with you. I mispronunciate everything, and Marina corrects me. And yeah. at this point, I'm just like, I made it this far. Well, like it's just the, the the thing about it too is like Ellen will get worked up sometimes with how I pronounce things because I do it intentionally sometimes, but she is like very much so more like, no, just pronounce it the right way. You sound stupid saying it like that. What's the car company? T o y o t a. Toyota. Toyota. Yeah. Am I saying it right? Yeah. So when I don't think about it, I say it wrong. I'll have to try and work it into the conversation later. There's some people that have Toyotas and they uh, have toy and then they put a Yoda like. Yeah, Toyota. Thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, that's my pronunciation issues done. Mm-hmm. Um, What's that- a Christmas drink that you were drinking? So it was like. Because uh, <laughs> the only Christmas drink is eggnog. So no, so I'm guessing it's not eggnog. It was like cranberry mixed with cranberry juice mixed into some Sprite topped with some cranberries. And I took a virgin version because I wasn't going to go full alcohol and get all like tipsy and stuff. Rant about episode one. It was going to get very political very quickly. To the Mrs. Family. (laughs) Don't know what war is going on, but I know we should be hating Christensen a new... (laughs) A new role. The chosen one needs to go out there and settle things. <laughs> um, but yeah, so should I go on to new stuff now? Yeah, whatever you got. So this one is not nerd. Well, I guess it could be nerd in a way. Like I define like people can be nerds about different things. Not necessarily like nerd means geeky stuff. Like because you can geek out about anything really. So this is for all those, I guess, coffee nerds, cafe nerds. Starbucks nerds, if you want to say. McDonald's is launching a spin-off restaurant focusing on coffee slash cafe to compete with Starbucks. It's so weird because they also so they're doing this, but you know where they're doing it? They're doing it in like the middle of the country. So they're it's not, not happening it. out here yet? Not yet. I think Idaho was the first one. Okay. The the crazier thing to me about it is the name. It's called Cosmix. C O S 
MCS. Don't don't they already have the branding? Um, Mick Cafe. Yeah. Why not That's just use that? Thing. It's a very weird menu too. So they have like their danishes and things, which aren't traditionally like healthy. Oh, they have a menu and everything. <clears throat> so there, it's not open yet, but someone found the first one. Uh-huh. And took a picture of their drive-thru. Oh, okay, okay. So it's so, like a leak almost. It's a what? It, it's like a leak. like a, uh... Yeah, almost like a leak. So they built okay. the building. They're getting ready to start. But they have a bunch of smoothies and things. But McDonald's cost for a McDonald's meal costs like 18 bucks now. Yeah. So I don't know how you make a smoothie that's not $25 with those numbers. Yeah. This seems like they're going to lose. Yeah, it does. I, I'm, I'm trying to find the menu here, but I haven't like... It seems like they didn't get... Oh, no, they, they got quite a bit of stuff. So, yeah, it seems like they have, like, those sweet drinks that, like, you would get that aren't, like, the fruit drinks that are caffeinated. You have, obviously, fraps and lattes, cappuccinos. The the slushies are weird to me. Teas, cold brews. Now, how, how does, like, because if this gets widespread, is there even going to be a reason to have a breakfast menu at mcdonald's like couldn't they just kind of cosmics becomes their own thing it's like if you want breakfast and stuff go there mcdonald's doesn't open up till like 11 or something they could but you know this is gonna fail right like there this is I this isn't gonna happen oh my god they have a twist cone on the menu do you think these ice cream machines will work we yeah. know mcdonald's ice cream <laughs> machines cannot work for their life but will cosmics ice cream machines work that's crazy like you already know this one's failing <laughs> did you hear about the guy it was during covid um it went viral so mcdonald's makes you buy the ice cream machine from them mm-hmm. it's a piece of garbage so you have to call the tech on site to fix it all the time mm-hmm. the tech is also working for mcdonald's but you still have to pay mcdonald's for him to come out so this guy bought uh, like a one that was decommissioned mm-hmm. figured out how to fix it and started selling his own device to fix it that would launch inside and regulate it and this, then mcdonald's sued him this just sounds like <clears throat> a way for mcdonald's to make money off of their own tech essentially yeah 100 percent. because so the they're, guy, they're probably overcharging for what he comes there and does so then not all that money goes directly to him, but they pocket some. Right. So the tech is just an hourly wage person. McDonald's gets double paid and it's a franchisee. So the, they're already getting money from the franchise. So it's like it's just oh, dirty God. business. But now it's like, all right, we're going to have ice cream and smoothies over here. At, what's it called? Cosmics? Yeah. Again, terrible name. Call it McCafe. I don't know. I think you already had the fan base. You already had the built in Mick, whatever. Yeah. And they're just like, you know what? No, not today. Why is also the uh, a caramel fudge brownie, blueberry lemon cookie? Like, there's so much crap on this. It's like, just get some eggs, coffees, teas on there and just go on. Like, there's too much on here, too. Yeah. Watch, the them, s- watch them they stop have- selling McMuffins at the regular McDonald's and only there. That's going to be their biggest draw. <clears throat> It could be, but mm. the second you start a business going, hey, I'm going to take down Starbucks, you've already lost. Oh, yeah. I think Starbucks has, I just watched a video on this, has more stores in the U.S. than any fast food place. Yeah, I believe it. It oh, works no, until it doesn't. No, it's Subway, then Starbucks, then McDonald's, I think. So I know it used to be Subway. I know Subway took a big hit the last few years. That's true. I did not think about that. Yeah, so I, I didn't know those check are- when that video was made, but. So I don't know when they updated. Yeah, but yeah, no, that was, uh, I brought that up because I thought it was interesting. I know people love Starbucks. I'm a Starbucks fanny. Um, hey, hey, don't laugh what, at is that. that. You, they, is that what you call yourselves? Y- y- <laughs> I don't know. I'm a star Starbucks fanny. I'm a starry. Um, no, too late. We're going to go with fanny, P-H-A-N-N-Y. <laughs> and now that's the t-shirt. I'm a Starbucks fanny. <laughs> okay. Hey, but it's it's a uh, peppermint mocha season, so Starbucks kind of hit in my wallet quite a bit this month. You just love love sitting in that drive through for forty five minutes. Oh my god, no! You, you can like pre order it now, and then it's ready when you get there. It's got sixty eight grams of sugar, so I wasn't eating su- or consuming sugar really for a long time, and then I started having that. My body's not reacting well, but it is what it is. Yeah, well, you got to choose episodes names for these remote ones. Because I don't have any audio. So are you going to call it I'm a Starbucks fanny or um, tease the season? Oh, my God. That's you a hard one. don't answer right now. But I think we, tease the season's better. Could be. I think that's better. It's more, It's more. you know, with everything that's going on, like, because it's the holidays, I think it goes better. We, we get that more into. Oh, uh, 
I'll, I'll I'll bring a peppermint mocha on the next podcast we do, and that one's gonna be I'm a Starbucks fanny. There you go. <laughs> so, um, that doesn't screw up your all meat diet. No, that's why I say my my body is not reacting to it well at all. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, I'm breaking out like crazy. So you're doing it live from your bathroom. That's why it's all <laughs> blurred out in the background. That's why the uh, bathroom at work has actually been out of service the past couple weeks. Since November. I did see that. <laughs> uh, what but, did you guys do? Yeah. So, next bit of news. Um, so, you obviously... Have you seen the Deadpool leaks that are going on? Like, not just, obviously, we've talked about some stuff. News that's coming I out. saw the picture of him with the dog. <clears throat> yes. So, there has been a lot of other pictures that are being uh, people are leaking out there because they're doing everything in person. So like, there's no like standing in those, uh, like in front of green screens or those big TV screens that they kind of film the backgrounds on. So mm-hmm. Ryan Reynolds was basically coming out saying like, uh, uh, I need to find it again. Exactly what he said, but you know, basically saying like, Hey, can you guys be like respectful of like all these leaks and everything? Because people were kind of going crazy about it. Um, because there's been so many, so many photos that have been released about it. And then today he posted another thing. Um, please don't please don't overuse the phrase Deadpool leaks because it might screw up search results if anyone is looking for Deadpool leaks or Deadpool spoilers or perhaps Deadpool scoops. So now he's literally just messing with the like leaks algorithm. Mm-hmm. So then the stuff, the actual leaks don't really get seen anymore. Just his article. No, it's yeah. kind of genius. It is kind of genius. And you know, what's funny is I've never like, I've never thought about that. Like why don't these companies hire or get bots going that make a bunch of these posts to basically prevent um, these leaks from being seen? It would be nice. Yeah. But, but he also, then the uh, internet's just all, <laughs> yeah, that is true. That uh, yeah, it basically is just bots now. Um, but he he also said that uh, it's important for them to shoot the new ne- new Deadpool film in real natural environments using practical effects. Um, and basically just hoping that websites and social media will hold back on showing stuff before it actually comes out. Right. Which I feel like I've never like he did it in such a kind, genuine way that I feel like people may actually respect him on this. It might be. I mean, he was super Canadian about it. Super polite. I forget that he's Canadian. That's right. But movies coming out in July, they got to be wrapping soon. Yeah, that is true. I, you know, I wonder too, like obviously the lack of special effects and stuff. Does that make like post-production easier in a way? If they're doing real life effects versus the CGI ones. Yeah. I'd say mm-hmm. it's quicker. Okay. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's the Deadpool news. Nice. Um, there was also something else that I read. This is going over to Star Wars. So <laughs> remember in episode eight when Ray and Kylo just destroy Anakin's lightsaber? Yeah. And then it's just magically back together in the ninth movie and yep. she uses it. Well, apparently uh, Ray repaired the lightsaber between The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker by using the Force Heal ability. So she can heal people and she can heal inanimate objects, huh? Specifically the Kyber crystal that snapped in half because those are <clears> what <throat> emit the power and the light. And I think in Star Wars canon, they're kind of like depicted as living beings in a way the kyber crystals or have living uh characteristics so she used that to heal the kyber crystal but at the same time nobody would know this because they don't explain it in the movies right so it's no longer bleeding once it bleeds you can reverse it it was never bleeding at that point it just kind of blew up gotcha so yeah my thing is why are we still talking about these movies because it's just funny to see how not, much not they you messed and up. Me. i meant like people in general oh it's yeah like, you got we got to forget these three happened. Yeah, that's true. Really? You're, that's usually a sticking point with you. No, I think The Last Jedi is great. Uh, Force Awakens is okay. Uh, Rise of Skywalker. But um, you can't gonna... just have meh, good, and bad and be like, yeah, I'll accept the entire thing. No, they should redo the entire thing. And they're just like, we're doing a Ray Solo movie. Which, that is... A uh, new thing that's in the news. Apparently, that is beginning filming next summer, I think. Okay. 
Oh, wow. Somebody didn't get a lot of sleep. No, me and the miss. Oh, I forgot you're in my ears. I was trying to cover it with my, uh, the drink. Oh. I forgot you're in my ears. Oh, no, me and the missus went and saw the Studio Ghibli film last night, The Boy and Heron. Oh, okay. So she really likes these movies. They're Japanese anime. And I kept looking at Fandango, didn't want it to sell out, didn't want it to sell out, didn't want it to sell out. Finally get it, and they only had it for two nights, mm-hmm. which was a Wednesday and Thursday, and I didn't want to risk them not doing it more than two nights, so I bought tickets for Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So we didn't get home till like 11, then I had to work in the morning. So I know, I was so confused when you sent me a text about the beef. Oh, yeah, I was just responding to your joke. Yeah, but you sent it at like 10.30 at night? Yeah, we had just gotten home. Which I was, I was, I was asleep by then, but I was so confused. I was like, I woke up this morning, I was like, wait, why did he send me a text at 10 30 is he sick <laughs> um and okay i got that information wrong the film is not filming in april 2024 the script is not ready but there is a chance it does get start filming at some point in 2024 i hope it's a prequel series where we see her digging through trash all for two hours bb8 watches from afar <laughs> he was really planning for her to be his uh owner for a long time um Hope we get to see the other guy smuggling spice. <laughs> there's there's another female actress that may come back to Star Wars, too. Ooh, I did hear this one. Bringing back the princess. Yep, Natalie Portman. Why not? She said she would be completely down and that her experiences on the prequels was only good, essentially. I mean, she had a career after it, too, so that was kind of nice. Yeah, and also, like, I, I don't see, like, the in the Darth Vader comics, there's a lot of stuff where, like, he has visions and stuff of Padme and everything. Like, they could they could do something like that. And in the uh, cartoon, she had a lot of solo adventures, so... That, too. Let's just really remake just... the Clone Wars series now, but live action. Could do that. Just keep adding those little mini side missions, that's all. God, but honestly, God. like, she's like, no one asked, and I was like, eh, that's kind of disrespectful. <laughs> yeah um did you also hear <laughs> what happened to her on the red carpet for the phantom menace no on the red carpet for the phantom menace she met king charles king charles the third on, on the red carpet and he asked her if she was in the original films and she was like no i'm 18 <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a guy that never saw the original films and was just like uh all right how do i make a conversation with a young person <laughs> i know these movies are really big i don't know why but let me try to act involved it's pretty much what happened yeah but also why are the royals at the phantom menace premiere yeah i don't know well, i guess maybe maybe the sons were younger at the time i don't know yeah yeah i don't know maybe that's a weird one yeah but no i did i did read that she's like i'm open to it and they're just like what would we do yeah um, did you have a chance at all to watch the Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer? I did. Um, I watched it the morning after it came out because uh-huh. they did that sneak release. Well, that entire thing happened because it got leaked the night before. And because of leaks, Rockstar was just like, okay, here's where you can watch the real trailer where it's supposed to be. And the trailer has only since then broke a bunch of records for most views and likes within 24 hours or something. Um, and on top of that, I'm not sure how many people know this. When Rockstar releases the, uh, any footage of these games, that's all in-game footage in some capacity. It's never like they're using CGI and doing those CGI scenes. Mm-hmm. They're, that graphical fidelity is actually running in the game. So everything that we saw is very like a very high possibility that that's how the game actually looks when we get it. Which is crazy. Uh, a couple of thoughts. Super realistic. Super. I thought it was funny. Yeah. That they took all those viral people from Florida moments. Oh, great. Awesome. And uh, put them into the game. Hilarious. Couple couple quick thoughts. Thought one, maybe getting too realistic. Maybe. The strip club scene, I can see being problematic, where people <laughs> are going to spend like two years of their life in the strip club. That already happens in Grand Theft Auto Five, Which is crazy. Bring back the paper strippers from like uh, the first three or four <laughs> with the hands, like where you just go in, buy it, get out. Yep. Let's not, let's not get too weird with it. There's yep. already enough creeps online. But also the dialogue is what threw me. Mm. I don't know. I think they were trying to be like very, like it's a trailer. They don't want to release too much. Hey, Marco, ask me, uh, how, do I know what I did to get in here? Do you know what you did to get in here? Just unlucky, I guess. Well, I think the visuals were also supposed to be showing that. And there's also a theory that that trailer <laughs> is happening backwards. So... The events that we see in there, mm-hmm. if you watch them in reverse, that's how she ends up there. She ends up in jail now. Yes. See, with the uh, ankle bracelet, I can honestly see they're either going to jump around with the timeline 
Mm-hmm. Or she gets off probation and then you can go to the rest of the map. So there's been a lot of theories that this one jumps around in time. Um, apparently the story between the two main characters there, you, you're able to play as both the female and male character, I think. Uh, but those characters are supposed to be like a modern age, Bonnie and Clyde. Is that correct? Yep. Um, so that's actually, so like people can probably figure out what the story is going to be about in, in uh, somewhat, but I'm super excited for the game. I think it looks great. Um, Rockstar has never disappointed me really with a game. My thing is just like, okay, it's been a decade in the making mm-hmm. and it's still not done. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, who knows where we're all going to be in two years? That too. So, so it's just like, hope I'm still around for it. Yeah. Yep. Hope I'm not, hope civilization hasn't turned into like the Hunger Mush. Games. <laughs> This is going to be the game that heals the world. Everybody's going to come together because of this game. But also, Marco, you got to realize this means you have like two more Grand Theft Autos left in your life, maybe three. Y- you know, I've been and thinking about that, to- and I've been having an existential crisis because of that. I've been like, you got to be kidding me. It, and it's not only that. It's like, like there may be another Grand Theft Auto. Like, there may be a third one in my life. But at that point, my motor skills are going to be so awful <laughs> that I can't play it. I'm going to be, like, having, like, tremors and stuff. And I'm not going to be able to. I'm just going to keep dying. But also, you're going to keep up with the uh, Xbox Series 45. At, yeah. some po- at some point, your video games are going to have to be put on the back burner. You're not going to get the new system every year. And it's going to be a whole thing. Hey, I think you heavily doubt the American people getting a shorter work week. So yeah, I can't wait for that. That um, just means I, I have to work the same, but maybe get a couple more pennies. Yep. Um, but um, a, a former uh, rock star dev also came out though. Cause he watched the trailer and he's like, no, like you guys don't understand. This is what the game is going to look like. If not better. I did see that. Um, so I, I do think like people should not be too worried about it being downgraded. Like we see a lot of games. But the big bombshell is, is even in 2025, they are not releasing this game on PC in the beginning. It's only releasing on console when it initially released. And you just spend money on a gaming device, huh? Gaming PC? Nope, I have my PS5. Never got a gaming PC, actually. No? After all that bragging you did in text messages? Uh, so the one I went to get on uh, through BJ's that had a really good deal... Um, had it purchased and everything. And then they sent an email saying it was actually sold out. And they were like, sorry, Ms. Dina Cola. Yeah. Well, to be fair, it was my fault. I could have gotten it the day before. I was like, yeah, I'll be fine. It will be there tomorrow. Nope. I'm not too bummed about it because now I'm just going to buy a PlayStation five pro when that releases to play grand theft auto on, even though I already have a PlayStation five, but yeah. Hey, do what you gotta do. Yep. Um, did you see the penguin teaser that came? I did not. Uh, 30 seconds. Yeah. These yeah. teasers are starting to be trailers. Yeah. Um, it's just him doing crime. <laughs> like, I love I love the tone and the way that things that they showed are filmed, but it's again, it's a teaser. It's not gonna show me what it actually is. Right. Yeah. It's one of those things, man. You make the star the villain and then it muddies everything. Yeah. We'll see. I gotta check out the in season HBO for the Dolphins. I haven't started watching that yet. Oh, hard knock. Yep. Um, I hear it's supposed to be pretty good. Yeah. And there's actually been some weird NFL news that's come out recently. Uh Oh, but this is about Taylor Swift in the NFL. Okay. So, uh, she had to come out and say something because people are very upset in the NFL, obviously that how much publicity she's getting while at these games, which I did say this quote, which to be fair, it is like, it is kind of ridiculous. Like I know why the NFL is doing it, but when I'm watching the NFL too, it's like, like, come on, like I'm here to watch football. Like I don't need you guys pointing to the camera talking about Taylor Swift all the time. Um, but basically she came out and said, I'm there to support Travis. I have no awareness of if I'm being shown to too much and pissing off a few dads, brads, and chads. Weird phrasing, but I like it. Yeah. So that, but also staying on the topic of Taylor Swift, I didn't realize how hard people train for concerts. Oh yeah. Because she came out with a quote saying she began intense training six months ahead of the Eras tour. Every day I would run on the treadmill singing the entire set list out loud. Fast. That's three hours. Yeah. Fast for fast songs in a jog or a fast walk for slow songs. I wanted to get it in my bones. That is the most crazy thing. I didn't know that this was like 
a thing. Well, especially she's moving, dancing. It's crazy. Like, yeah. the amount of work and effort it takes. Yeah. And she doesn't look like an athlete, but you got to believe, like, three hours a night, three, four nights a week. That's, mm-hmm. that's a lot. Yeah. And then, your new sing- I'm going to have you sing songs for three hours while you work out <laughs> nonstop. With my... T- Except, should I do it, like, when there's a lot of people at the gym just so I murder their ears, too? With headphones on so they can't hear what Be- song you're singing? Because, like, the whole thing at the gym is it's, like... You have to suffer to enjoy other things in life. So it's like my singing is just going to make these people suffer even more. Especially if you only know six songs, so it's going to get repetitive real fast. I know. Like, we should do this in and, June. And I'm and just saying we wish you a Merry be, Christmas. And tease the season to be jolly. <laughs> what the hell is he saying? <laughs> what is he saying? You're getting all the words wrong. He can't hear you. He's got headphones on. Can you see he's, he's swifting over there? <laughs> Should he, should he listen to Taylor Swift? Ah, it's not really his bag. He's listening to the same playlist you are, but on his headphones at different times. Oh man! So yeah, that's uh, that's the Swifty news. Um, I didn't know we had a Swift segment, but I like it. <laughs> should we should we do it more? <laughs> the, does There's the, plenty of it. Does the missus want to be a part of one of those? She's not. I'm a bigger Swifty than she is, to be honest. Really? Because yeah. I would love to have had her on here and just debate her for no <clears throat> reason whatsoever about Taylor Swift. Can we you actually? Could. Can we get a Taylor Swift fan on here and I just like say like something ridiculous, like Taylor Swift's overrated, and try to keep the try to keep the conversation going and try to prove them wrong? Just make that upset. I might not be here for that because that sounds so awkward. <laughs> Because you don't know what you're talking about, and you're just going to get destroyed. I think that's the joy. <laughs> that would be the joy. Oh, man. You, you may what, else we, oh, what else we have? What um, else we got in the news? Uh, you want me to bring up a topic? Yeah, you go heard, ahead. Uh, Tim Allen's catching some flack right now. For the Santa Claus's Season 1 pilot episode? Yeah, because someone like that was in one scene, he asked her not to step on his lines. So he, So she was upset, too, because he went to a producer and then told the producer and the producer had to relay it to the actress and she quote unquote called him such a bitch. Those were her exact words. And it's like, and she was like, and then after the scene, he wouldn't even like talk to me or make eye contact. That's like, that's what happened. That's the worst thing that happened to you. I mean, he's 70 years old. Maybe I, you got me. I, I like, I don't know. I think she took it a little too personally. It's like, just listen to the producer read your lines the way it's supposed to like the way that they want you to and then get off set like you you she was in she was in i think the one scene right right i can't remember that episode she was in the one scene it's like okay it's not a big deal you're not here for the rest of the show i can see why maybe he doesn't like feel the need to talk to you it's not like he has to build like uh chemistry with you at all yeah it's just like okay we did our work we're done now. Or maybe he's trying to be nice by talking to the producer and not like going saying it in front of everyone. Uh, yeah, like he doesn't say it in front of everyone, and as opposed to making it like her feel uncomfortable, like with him directly saying it, he goes like, "Hey, like you know, could you like talk to her about it, just so it doesn't seem like I'm coming off as such like a you know jerk." But I guess it doesn't matter. He still did. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I uh, you said you started it. I'm on the last episode. I think I should I should get going on. I think it just came the Last episode just came out last night. Oh, nice. Um, but with that being said, Tim Allen wants to do a season three. I think he likes acting with his daughter. I think it's fun for him. Yeah. I think it's easy, easy paycheck for him at this point. He knows the character. They can do it in a couple months in the summer. Literally. And then, yeah. And then they get to keep pushing it out. So. <laughs> and you want to what he said about season three? What's He's that? like, I'm a sucker for sci-fi films. I really want this to go more sci-fi. Is it Santa <laughs> versus the aliens. <laughs> I hope I hope like somehow like Ray and Finn pop up in there and we get that like Lego Star Wars Christmas special, but in the Santa Clauses. Oh, the one you didn't watch but and then recommended to me. Yeah, still not over that one. <laughs> she watched the Halloween one yet? No, <laughs> you only get one shot at it. One shot at <laughs> ruining my forty-five minutes. I was like, "What is he talking about? This is so bad." Uh, I still get amusement out of that to this day. I was really hoping I get Joe to watch that one. You no. saved him. I'd always try to get you back, but you never watch anything I recommend. So, 
I'll have to think of something else. Plus, I would do thorough research before watching it. I'd almost spend as much time researching it as I would watching it. Right. Um, Andor season two got pushed to 2025. So, I mean, that gives me, what, two more years to watch the last six episodes? Yeah, which I'm through. still not going to do. Um, Mahershala Ali, the guy that plays Blade. Okay. Um, he's really encouraged with the progress on the new script and everything. And he thinks they'll be back at it relatively soon because <clears throat> we know we heard like the issues he was having with the uh, script beforehand, how he yeah. was kind of a side character in his own movie. Mm-hmm. So that should be starting filming soon, but I guess it's a good thing to hear that he is at least willing to come back to it soon. I just don't care. It's not even that this thing was supposed to come out like six years ago. That, like, that is true. Make it, don't make it. Mm-hmm. Let me know when it's in theaters. Um, <clears throat> did you ever watch the Barbie movie? Yes, I did. I finally watched it. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Wasn't? Oh, amazing. you just watched it? Yeah. Um, I thought it was funny. They could have cut like twenty minutes out of it, but yeah, honestly, that's, what I that's not. There's some really funny parts. Mm-hmm. I'm just Ken. Matt yeah. Swain's push on the beach. Yeah. Um, like I said, there's like that last twenty minutes where Barbie meets her creator, and there's this whole moment. Didn't. Didn't really need it, and Will Ferrell was funny. Margarita killed it. So good cast. Yep, and uh, America Ferrero was really good. Yeah, we may be getting more Barbie stuff in the future. I mean, they have to. Hasbro doesn't exactly have too many uh, things left. Well, the director Greta Gerwig was asked yeah. about a Ken spinoff movie, and she said, I can't comment on that. I mean, the truth is, I guess we'll see. So it seems like they want to do it. It's just not sure if it's going to happen entirely because... I mean, Marco Robbie's still bringing it up in a bunch of interviews, so I'm sure it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. That, and oh. that cast was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Michael Sarah. <laughs> Michael Sarah Ryan craps, cracks me up in everything he's in. There is something mm-hmm. about his demeanor that is so funny that I can't help but start laughing hysterically anytime he makes a joke even if it's not funny yeah it's you michael sarah's me very similar very deadpan early marco not marco now early marco was michael sarah so you broke out of your cocoon into this beautiful butterfly we see before us hey it's cold i can out. see the look on your face you did not like that one bit so i apologize if i offended you <laughs> he said that's who you me. were he did you were. me i was gonna play this at whatever mark this is replay it i need to go back and look at my face then the look out of your face was just like i don't think we're friends <laughs> no i was more offended by you say i was out of my cocoon i liked it when i was in my cocoon i don't like I that like i grew it. up well i don't think you're uh, completely out of the cocoon you still no. go back in every once in a while oh yeah the cocoon uh, being mother's basement yeah <laughs> hey that's where i am right now I'm, I'm in my cocoon uh trent's on the injury report but um i asked him if that godzilla movie was dubbed or not mm-hmm. so he went and saw it that day and uh it was uh not dubbed you have to read it but oh really which doesn't stop me but it made 15 million at the box office and it came out like a year and a half ago so mm. that's pretty impressive that's the one that was rated really good the minus one one that's the one you told me about last week uh yeah, yeah godzilla minus one where uh supposedly one of the better movies of the year yeah so um i'm a Still might check it out if I can get time to get over there. Did you see what Netflix came out and said recently? Talk to me. They seem to be interested in reviving Zack Snyder's DC Universe. They specifically said, obviously, we would like to license it at some point. We'd love to have it on so that fans can experience more Zack. The more Zack we have, the better we are. He just did a movie for them, didn't he? He did. That Rebel Moon one? Still didn't see it, but uh, yeah, they're just really, really kissing his butt. Oh, does he have like a, like a stranglehold on them? Like, what, what is he doing? Why would they want that DC universe? One, DC is never giving them that license unless DC makes a ton of money off of it. Two, right. and- why would DC do that? When they're trying to make a whole nother universe now. Do you right. know the amount of confusion that would cause? Because people are just going to watch the one on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> So, it's so ridiculous. I don't even think I would want... A, no, I wouldn't want a Zack Snyder universe anymore. I just... Everyone take five years off. We'll come back. We'll figure it out when we got a bunch of kids running around. Mm-hmm. And be like, all right, this is Batman. Don't know what's going to happen here. Yeah. But this one just got announced yesterday. Marvel Studios announced three Disney Plus series premiering in 2024. Yep, and they... So, they have the three series and one movie, and that's it. 
we have X-Men anime series, the 97 we talk about, Echo and Agatha Darkhold Diaries, which is its fourth name. Yeah, so right now, so pretty much three of the movies, I think, or three of the projects they're doing have a tie-in with the MCU universe, like, heavily. Deadpool, the, uh, or just two. Deadpool and the Agartha one? Ag- Agatha? Agatha. Agatha. Those two have a... T- like a really good tie into the Marvel universe, but Echo's supposed to be that Marvel spotlight. Daredevil show. And Daredevil very rarely shows up in the MCU movies. Yeah. He but, was there for like two minutes in one of the Spider Man ones. But specifically, Echo is the first Marvel spotlight movie, which is supposed to be separated from the whole cinematic universe more and focus strictly on the character. You did say that. So, I mean, we'll see. That's still a lot of series. Because that is not even including Star Wars, so and I, I guess they're know, going TV show heavy. I don't know how the Wolverine, like the X Men ninety seven, like if that's going to tie in at all with the MCU. I think it would be cool if at some point they do kind of like throw cartoon characters in there. That'd be kind of cool. I mean, it's possible. It is possible. I think it would be pretty cool. But or I don't take know. the MCU characters and put them in X Men ninety seven. Yeah. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's crossed three hundred million dollars at the worldwide box office. The movie is now the highest grossing post-COVID horror movie, which is insane. Um, do you know how much it costs to make? No, I think but... it was pretty cheap. I think it was pretty cheap as well. But what's insane is, is that movie made more than the Marvels has made and cost less than the Marvels. Oh, by far. The Marvels had a huge budget. Oh, yeah. It cost oh. $20 million. That was its budget. And the actors are probably like, hey, can we get some more money now? Yeah, exactly. So, just absurd. But, you know, you see this a lot. Low-budget films make, like, waves in the market a lot. Like, they really do really good a lot of the time. And I think it's because when it's not as commercialized and they have to focus on making a lower budget, there's more heart that goes into it. Yeah, but you got to remember, for every, like, one that hits, there's 50 that don't. Yeah. So, I think it's just people want something different. Yeah. We're getting a lot of the same stuff every week at the theaters to the Mm. point like I'm not even going. You're not going. So if there's something different, I think people want to go. Five Nights at Freddy's also had the whole gaming community, too. Yeah. But honestly, they're the toughest people to win over. Yeah. So the idea Mario and Five Nights at Freddy's both did well Mm -hmm. is uh, interesting to me because for a while, video game movies just kept tanking and tanking. Yep. Like weekly. So. Oh, yeah. We got anything else going on? Uh, Tenacious D is coming back. Nice. Uh, Jack Black and his band are making a song for the Kung Fu Panda 4 end credits. Love it. Can we Can we do this? Can we have Tenacious D and Lonely Island team up to make music for this entire movie? I don't know if kids would love it, but I'd be done. I would you say. know Tenacious D is uh, Jack Black's band, right? Yeah, I knew that. Okay. And uh, were you a Kung Fu Panda kid? I was. I saw the first one. I just miss Kung Fu Panda, so... I, I, I saw... I liked it when I was younger, but I haven't seen anything about it since, really. Which one is this? It's three or four? Four. So I'm just glad Jack Black didn't retire. He was supposed mm-hmm. to retire five years ago. Yeah, he's He said back. he was going to do one more movie, and now he's back and top of the world. Yeah. Um, we also have insane Nicolas Coot cage news that came out Uh oh so nicholas cage didn't watch tv until his son made him watch breaking bad he found the series magnificent and now wants to act in tv shows instead and then came out to say he only has a couple movies left in him before he wants to do tv shows permanently well he's back from that 80s actor age where tv was a death sentence yeah you didn't tv actors wanted to be in movies and movie actors did not do tv yep it was like, now he's at this time where it's just like, you can do both, and people are super excited about. Uh-huh. And honestly, I'd watch a Nicolas Cage TV show. Can we get Nick Cage in a sitcom? Sold. I, I don't even that. think you need to tell him it's a sitcom. Just let him do his thing, read the script however he wants it, and it's <clears> going to be funny regardless. Yeah, and if he's trying to be funny, even better. <laughs> What's the premise? I assume there's got to be a kid that has to act opposite Nick Cage. Actually... You know what? He would have been perfect as like a Michael Scott replacement. Imagine if like he came in and he was the regional manager of Dunder Mifflin. I th- I think it works somehow. Well, remember that um, Kick-Ass movie? Yeah. Where he played like a knockoff Batman mm-hmm. as the girl's dad. Mm-hmm. I can see that being funnier because he was very dark in that movie. Yeah. So it's like he's a vigilante at night, but Mr. Mom during the day. Yeah. I don't know. I think I think it's got a lot of potential. I need him in a sitcom ASAP now. But Pretty sweet. 
Yeah. All We've right, been going man. for 49 minutes. That's usually our end. I just wanted to bring up a couple of quotes about tonight's Thursday night football game. Okay. Patriots Steelers. That's tonight. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be staying up for this one. Uh, Steelers starting quarterbacks out. Mitch Trubisky will be starting. Yep. Um, I believe we're still rolling with Billy Zappi as starting quarterback. So essentially two backup quarterbacks. Yep. Um, Patriots Hall of Famer Ty Law was asked on the Greg Hill Show, if the Patriots have a chance tonight against the Steelers, he replied, yeah, a chance to get their butts whipped. He hey, goes, I, think, I think the Patriots are just throwing together a master class performance of uh, just going for that, um, what's it called, number one pick. Well, here's the problem. Tampa. Panthers need to win one. Mm-hmm. Panthers need to win one, and they're pretty bad. And also, the Steelers lost to Arizona on Sunday, so like this game could easily be nine to three mm-hmm. at best. But let's not, let's not even forget this: the Patriots are so bad this year that they kicked them off of Monday Night Football. Oh yeah, first time ever. And not only that, it is costing people thousands of dollars because there are West Coast fans that had tickets Traveling. to that game to travel there, hotel and everything, and now it's moved. I couldn't even imagine. I'd be so mad. Well, it's never happened before in the like in the NFL ever. I can't believe they actually did that. Oh yeah, it's crazy, and especially because you have to buy those tickets like before the season starts, so you don't know who's good, who's bad. Yeah. Uh, running back Najee Harris of the Pittsburgh Steelers, when asked about Mitch Trubisky and his leadership style, the reporter asked, and Harris replied, "It's fine, I guess." <laughs> I saw that and, one. And when they followed up about his style, all they got was vocal i guess all right and in all the promos it's shown tj watt and bill belichick because there's not one star in the patriots that they could put on that screen yep so uh should be a real barn burner i'd say we put malik cunningham out there and just do our best do our worst give me that first round pick yeah i know do we we don't even play the panthers this year sadly crazy can we can we just do that can we just give like kansas city a bye week or give them another opponent and we just have monday night football patriots Panthers worst ratings of all time no but it's it's the toilet bowl that's going to bring a whole different like energy and stuff like at least they're playing for something oh, yeah. we can even I don't think we could beat Arizona or Chicago right now so I honestly think it's down to us and the Panthers yeah and the only thing the Patriots could do is win a few games at the end and just really mess up yeah so all right man that's all we got thanks yep. again for the remote sessions we're doing that president vice president thing where we can't both be in the same room because uh can't both get sick yeah all right bud we've been right. nerds in the gym i'm brandon i'm marco adios t